Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, 6.1b, the second day of uh, 6.1. Here's the question I'm going to ask you on your answer or your exit quiz. Take a look at it. I'll ask you in a moment. The first thing I want to teach you about today is how to write a proportion equation uh, consistently well. And to do that, you have to set up a proportion equation which involves filling in the blank of four things. Uh, you have to be able to figure out the relationship between two items, two comparisons, and link them together in a consistent way. So it's kind of like one of those analogies in English class where you're taught like this is to this as this is to that. Um, except in this case we're talking about triangles and geometry. Over to the left hand side you'll see two triangles, one larger than the other, and they're similar to each other. This is an extremely common problem in geometry. Obviously, these don't have any variables in it to trick you up, so you can see how much more difficult this would be. But you can see that these two triangles being similar, the proportions of their sides are related to each other. So if you were to set up a proportion equation about these two triangles, you can do so in many ways so long as you're consistent. Uh, one of the ways that I'm going to do it right here is basically just take the long side of the triangle to the short side of the triangle for each triangle. Now I can put the large triangle on the, the information from the large triangle on the left of my equation or the right side of my equation. I have a lot of flexibility there, but so long as I'm consistent, long on top, short on bottom, I should be good to go. So you'll see if I set up this equation properly, I've got 9 over 3 which is 3, and if I fill it in for the second triangle, I've got 6 over 2, which is also 3. So this happens to be a true proportion. Now, that might bother you because you said, well, Mr. Carrera is going to do it much differently than that, uh, and there are indeed many different correct ways to do this, so long as you're consistent about it. So you can flip it from left to right and up to, up to down. So if you put, say, the short side on top, you will have something that looks like this. And I also switch to the positions of the triangle. So this time the smaller triangle is on the left and the larger triangle is on the right. However, this is very rarely how these problems are presented to you. Usually these are word problems and usually they are something that involve a scale factor. Being able to set up a proportion equation is an immensely powerful thing. You can use it to predict from a small scale to a large scale or vice versa from a large scale to a small scale. Uh, forensics people use this all the time and just kind of determine, you know, if they find an arm bone or even a finger bone out from some human victim or whatever, they can figure out about approximately how tall this person was just by measuring in detail how large the bone is that they found. Uh, but we're doing something way more exciting here. We're going to count trees in a forest. Uh, these are infected trees. Uh, you know, around here we've got this emerald ash borer that kills all the trees around here. And basically, say you're hired by the Forest Service to go count these things. You're not going to go count the entire, you know, you're not going to go survey the entire forest, but you can probably deal with two acres. So in those two acres, you find 31 trees that are infested. And if the forest is 253 acres, how many trees would you expect to find that are infested in that same, that larger area? I'd like you to pause the video and try to write a proportion equation for this equation. So pause the video and come back to me. Okay, if you've done that right there, again, there are many different uh, proper answers for this. The way I did it was I did infected trees over the number of acres. Uh, so in the given, I was given 31 trees in two acres, so that's going to be my left-hand side. And then I need a variable for the stuff I don't know, which is how many infected trees there are in 253 acres. And there's my proportion equation. From there, it's cross products and solve. So 2 times x equals 31 times 253. Divide by 2 to solve, and you know, you could, I suppose, ballpark it to your superior person as you report to them that there's roughly 4,000 trees that are infected in that forest. Well, it's now time for our super secret code. It is 849 today. Moving on to our second example about proportions. Here's a triangle. They tell you that the distance 
from A to B is proportional to B to C in a ratio of 7 to 4. They want you to set up a proportion equation and solve for X. Again, I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can set that thing up. If you do that correctly, we want to take the ratio that was given to us, 7 over 4, and since they gave it to us in AB to BC, we might as well keep that trend going. So I'm going to put the stuff I know about AB on the numerator and the stuff I know about BC on the denominator. If you do that, again, you can switch these things from left to right if you wrote it differently or uh, top to bottom, but either way, just be consistent about it. Here's one possible proportion equation that you could have written. Uh, from there again, it's just cross products. Make sure to, in, to insert a set of parentheses around 2x plus 6 and then solve it away. So write down that equation after your cross products, distribute and solve. You'll get down to x equals 3. The next thing that I need to talk about is something called the geometric mean. And unless you go into finance or stats, I'll be honest with you, you're not going to use it all that often. But it is kind of an interesting topic, and I'm going to explain it here at a higher level than you're actually going to need to do use to do your homework. But I wanted to start out by talking about the arithmetic mean. Now, there are actually many ways of measuring the middle of a data set. Uh, you know mean, median, mode. Uh, and the mean that you know, there are actually many different types of means that you can measure a data set by. So the one that you know is called the arithmetic mean. And uh, as you know, to find the mean of a set of numbers, you add them all together and then you count them up. Uh, like right here, I have my first thing plus my second thing plus my third thing plus however many things I have all the way until I get to the end of my list of n things. Now this list could have 100 things in it, it could have two things in it. Uh, but either way, I would add all those up and then as you know, you would then divide by however many things you had or n things. Now the geometric mean starts off in a very similar way, except instead of, multi instead of adding the things together, we're actually going to multiply the things together, okay? Now over on the left hand side with the arithmetic mean, we want this to represent the numbers in the data set. So we did all this addition, this repeated addition, and we would like to undo that so we kind of get back to an average value of our data set. And if we do repeated addition, well, that's multiplication. So we're going to undo it with division. And you can see that we divided by n. Well, over here with the geometric mean, now we have repeated multiplication. And you ask yourself, well, what is repeated multiplication? It's an exponent. So if you want to undo an exponent, you have to take a root. And you're probably well familiar with a square root and maybe even a cube root. And you might be aware that there are higher roots, but you can take the nth root of a, a number. You can take the second root, we call it the square root. You can take the third root, we call it a cube root. Then we just have fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, etc. But in the same way, we would just take the nth root of that product. And there's a fancy button on your calculator that'll do that for you so you don't have to think too hard about it. Uh, but it's something that can be done. The cool thing about your assignment is that our list of things in your assignment is only two items long. So literally all you have to do to find the geometric mean of something in your homework is simply multiply those two things together. And then since there's two things, you're going to take a square root of the product. Okay, so that right there is your formula for finding the geometric mean of two numbers. Now the consequence of doing that little bit of arithmetic is that you do uh, create this third number that you can now write a proportion equation about. So A is to X as X is to B. In other words, the proportion from A to X will be the same number as it is from X to B. Now, if A and B are different from each other, which is usually the case, uh, the geometric mean X will be in between them just the way you would expect an average would be, but it's closer to the smaller value than the larger value, whereas an arithmetic mean would be dead middle, uh, at least when we're talking about two numbers. 
So there's a second thing that you kind of need to know, which is the geometric mean will always be less than or equal to the arithmetic mean of a data set. And that goes for any amount of things that you multiply or add together, not just two things. So either way, you've got A, then X, then B. If A is small, uh, you can list the three numbers from the smallest. Let's just say it's A. Then X will be between A and B somewhere. The arithmetic mean will be slightly bigger than X or equal to X in most cases, in all cases. So then we come to our very final example, uh, doing a homework problem. It says simply find the geometric mean of 225 and 400. And quite simply, you multiply those two numbers together, you get a big number, 90,000, and then take the square root of it, which happens to be 300. Now the result of that is that you can now write a proportion equation that makes you look smart in some manner. And it looks a little something like this. And you'll notice that it is a true proportion. So if you take the small number divided by the mean, and then the mean divided by the large number, you get the same exact ratio. If you take 225 divided by 300, you get 0.75. And if you take 300 divided by 400, you get 0.75. So we end up with a true proportion. Now, if you want to know something that actually came out of this geometric mean thing, I would encourage you to go see the annotation that I'm including in this video that explains why a piece of paper is the size of a piece of paper. If you're curious about that, you can go to this number file video and watch it and all their other very nerdy math videos if you want. Uh, but if you want to just get on with your exit quiz, click the other annotation and have a good day.